So I'm Daisuke Suzuki from ISOS Textile. So I'm about the mass function of planets measured from microlensing. Um, so, um, so this is a uh, um, this plot shows a uh, discovered exoplanet. So x axis is a same measure axis divided by the snow line, which is a similar peak, uh, plot as uh, Yoshi showed before. And the y axis is a uh, asthmas. Um, so the uh, red, these plots are uh, showing uh, microlensing di uh, discoveries. So um, as we learned from yesterday, we so the microlensing is very sensitive to this unique parameter space, and this is very important because this region is the most efficient uh, parameter space for the formation of planet, planets. So um, we want to compare these uh, discovered planets with uh, um, such a population census model from um, Ida Lin paper. But um, so th this picture is showing the, the sum of the uh, number of the planets of the maybe 10,000 systems. Um, so we want to compare this uh, plot. But uh, the problem is, the, so this observed uh, picture has a bi detection bias. So we don't see any planets around here, but this is because just uh, the transit or RV and microlensing doesn't have, the, they don't have the detect, uh, sensitivity around here now. So we need to um, correct this, um, discover, uh, the, this discovery with uh, uh, detection efficiency or completeness. So um, these pictures showing the detection efficiency for transit, RV, or direct imaging or microlensing. So I think everybody already noticed which one is a microlensing sensitivity. So the answer is this. So this is microlensing, RV, transit, and direct imaging. So these two surveys are sens uh, has a sensitive to the inner hot planets, and microlensing has a sensitivity around the snow line, just beyond the snow line. And the direct imaging has a sens uh, sensitivity further out, more colder planets and uh, massive planets. So um, we need to consider the detection efficiency to the statistical study. So uh, let me briefly uh, review the um, planet frequency or mass function, mass ratio function from the microlensing. So I think this is a first statistical large study from microlensing survey uh, observation, but um, this is before the first discovery of the microlensing planet, so there's no detection. So this is just a, um, a parameter. Oh, sorry, a parameter for the um, frequency of the planet. So this is a allowed region, and this is an excluded excluded region. So um, this is in 2002, and four years later, as Yoshi mentioned, Gould paper uh, estimated the planet frequency of the Neptune mass planet here, but, but just they used just two planet discovery um, to Neptune mass discovery. So this is robust estimate, but um, they didn't um, uh, calculate the detection efficiency um, in each event. So um, this is a, um, probably first um, well characterized the planet frequency from microlensing result. So this is good. Um, at our 2010 paper. So this red point showing the, the, um, the planet frequency from microlensing. So this is a mass ratio of four ti five times 10 to minus four, which is around the uh, uh, Saturn mass planet. So the frequency is about 30%, 36%. And also um, this is a factor 10 um, higher than number frequency, planet frequency from the RV result. So this is a, a inner hot planet. But um, so so the, here is a ten, factor ten difference. But uh, they um, they thought so this difference can be explained by the um, extrapolation of coming at our paper of the planet frequency as a function of separation. And also, uh, independent independent study from Sumiator paper, they um, f 
find, found the planet frequency as a function of mass ratio, and they estimated the slope of the mass ratio. So this is a, they, but they didn't estimate the normalization, so this is just a slope. So um, next step, um, Kassan's paper combined previous two studies, Simeator slope and the normalization from Guldator, and the Kassan paper found the mass function um, showing here in red. So, um, so previous study, they, the Guldator simulator, they did a um, mass rate, they studied the planet frequency as a function of mass ratio because mass ratio is, uh, can be directly measured from the light curve modeling of a micro event. But so we can't uh, directly measure the mass of the planet um, ex unless the, we can measure the finite source effect and parallax effect. So they, in this paper, Cassano estimated the the mass of the each event using the galactic model. I mean, the, they did a Bayesian analysis. So um, this is a, a robust um, mass function from microlensing. Um, and actually, this max, mass function is uh, used for the estimate of the very first microlensing survey. Um, but um, we cannot, um, so actually, um, the planet frequency could depend on the host star mass and the distance to the mass, uh, distance to the lens star. So um, we cannot um, estimate such a dependence from this study. So, um, for, so, so far, the mass ratio function has a better um, characterization of each um, mass, uh, the plant frequency for, from the microlensing. So this is another, um, result from the second Gen2 microlensing survey, as Yoshi said. So um, this is a, so this is also mass ratio function, but they did also study for the mass ratio function for the stellar binary companion. So um, we, the uncertainty is very large for the slope, like a 0.3 plus minus 0.4, but um, so, but they uh, first find the minimum in the um, planet, the companion frequency around the mass ratio of point, uh, point oh four around here. So uh, this uh, this can be explained by the uh, difference of the companion formation uh, theory because the um, planetary um, formation is a co-accretion and uh, the stellar binary will round off. Uh, formation can be explained by the uh, molecular cloud collapse or that, um, or disk instability. So, um, but um, th they use just nine planets for the mass ratio function for the planet planetary region, and uh, this is the latest result from more survey and combined with the previous good et and custom et paper. So this is a mass ratio. This is also a mass ratio function, not a mass function. So, um, so we used 30 planets in this study, and so we found a break here, and uh, at the mass ratio of 1.7 times 10 to minus 4. This is uh, um, corresponding to the Neptune mass um, planet. So, um, and also importantly, the median of the, these 30 planets the median of host star mass of the 30 planets is 0.56 solar mass, not, uh, not uh, 0 0.3 uh, solar mass. So maybe host star of the microlensing, planetary microlensing mass is uh, maybe M dwarf and K dwarf. The median is M dwarf or K dwarf. So um, this is around 2017, 2016, and in future 2025, maybe we we'll study more about the mass function and with a, uh, a few thousand uh, discovery of uh, micro planets with a mass and distance measurement. So we can study uh, mass function. But before the w first, we will study more about the mass function with more and over for KMTNet and for hopefully prime new infrared, new infrared micro survey and also we can put constraint on the mass function, not the mass ratio function, mass function 
from the K2 and Spitzer microlensing program. And also, the lens flux measurement, as um, JP said, it's also important. So, um, but today I'm focused on the MOA um, results. So, MOA is a Japan, US, and New Zealand collaboration. And we, are, uh, we have a, a dedicated 1.8 meter telescope in New Zealand. So microlensing is a very rare event, and the planetary signal occurs in short time. And we, don't, we cannot expect when its uh, anomaly happens. So we need a, a wide field of view, and we need a high cadence uh, observation. So this telescope has a 1.8 meter uh, mirror, and uh, field of view is 2.2 square degree. And we, use, we are using the custom um, more red filter to get uh, more photons from the main sequence during the pouch. So um, um, I'll skip detail, details of the st strategy, but the point is we are observing the birds uh, with a, um, at maximum 15, every 15 minutes we are observing the, this field because um, to, uh, to characterize the anomaly signal from only more. So um, we, we are adding the microlensing um, alert every year. So we, we, are find, we, found, uh, every, we found 500 microlensing events every year. And we used uh, 3,300 events in, from 2007 to 2012. So we used these, these data for the statistical study. So, um, but ha almost half of the 3,000 events are, were covered, poorly covered by the, um, by the survey because due to the, some weather or um, weather, weather, due to the weather maybe, or bad seeing. So uh, we uh, did the event selection, and I didn't write the criteria here, but we cut almost half of the event from 3,000. So uh, remaining event is almost uh, 1,500. And we did a single lens model and binary lens model to the remaining event. And we found, uh, so um, we found uh, 1,451 1, single lens event. And if the, this uh, chi square difference is larger than 100, we judge the, this is an anomaly event. And also, if the mass ratio of the binary model is smaller than 0.03, then we think this is a um, planetary event. So we, character, we selected this uh, event. So we found uh, 22 planetary events in this sample. And we found uh, uh, one ambiguous event, uh, which, is, uh, which could be planetary or still a binary event. But we con we include this event um, considering the delta chi square of 18 between these two models. And also, we consider the prior probability of this planetary frequency or stellar binary frequency. So um, the total planetary number of the planet is almost 23 in this sample. So, um, um, so we, now we need to consider the detection efficiency in the microlensing light curve. So this is a single lens event. And we, now we, are, we want to consider the detection efficiency of the planet in this event. So um, to compute the detection efficiency, we, use, we fix the, these um, basic parameter for the single lens event. And um, now we consider the planet detection efficiency to this mass ratio and this separation. So, um, Already, this light curve has a planetary signal compared to the single lens model, single lens light curve like this. But this um, distortion is very small, so maybe we cannot detect this signal. Um, so this is not detectable. And if and if we change the angle between the source trajectory and the um, binary axis to this degree, then the source trajectory hits the caustic, then we can see the signal. So maybe this configuration, this geometry, we can detect this signal. So it's detectable. And we, um, 
like this, we are changing the angle of the, uh, these two, the planet position between the, the lens, ax lens axis and the source trajectory. And this, this case, in this case, the anomaly occurs just after the, these data, so we cannot detect this signal. So this is non-detectable case. So um, like this, we compute, in, we inject the planetary signal in the light curve, and we judge uh, if the signal is detectable or not. So, um, so detection efficiency depends on the mass ratio and separation and uh, the angle between the lens axis and the source trajectory. And also um, detection efficiency depends on the data quality and also finite source effect. But um, most of the microlensing event, we cannot measure the finite source finite size, source size. So in this study, we estimate the um, finite, this parameter using the, assuming the typical uh, proper motion. So uh, the detection, so definition of detection is we use the same uh, criteria as I said before. So we fit the, um, the simulated light curve with single lens model and the binary lens model. And if the chi square is difference of the chi square is larger than 100, we judge the, the simulated planetary signal is detected. So um, we, the, the detection efficiency at the given separation and given mass ratio is the fra fraction of the detection within the all angle alpha. So and this, uh, we compute the detection efficiency changing the mass ratio separation angle. So then we can um, get this, uh, pic this plot. So this is a detection efficiency for a given um, microlensing event. So x axis is separation and y axis is mass ratio. So um, microlensing is uh, sensitive to the planet around the separation one, which is normalized by the Einstein radius. So also the massive planet is more easy to detect and the small planets are hard to detect. So, um, so red is, uh, the detection efficiency is high. So um, we calculate this detection efficiency for each event. And this is an example of the this detection efficiency in um, each planetary event. So, um, so in this calculation, we um, assume the planet uh, distribution in Log logarithmically uniform planetary distribution in this uh, calculation. So um, we find this is a, so, so this is a sum of the detection efficiency of um, each, the total event. So, so this is a survey sensitivity. So if the, um, each microlensing event host star has a planet in each um, grid, we can expect the, these number of the planet. But actual detection is also plotted in the red. So detection efficiency goes down to the small mass ratio, but as Yoshi said, the actual detection is almost flat. So um, also we plotted the, um, this white circle is uh, detect the planet detected by the high magnification channel, which often has a the de de degeneracy between the S, be S and the one over S. So we connect this um, white circle with the line. So, um, so here, this is a histogram of the detected planet. So this is a mass ratio histogram, and it seems almost flat. And so detection efficiency curve is uh, like this. So this, this is detection efficiency as a function of a mass ratio. So massive planet is a high detection efficiency and a low, low efficiency for the small planet. So uh, if we correct the, this black histogram by the, this detection efficiency, so then we can get the corrected intrinsic planet distribution as a function of mass ratio. So this red histogram is a corrected um, mass ratio distribution. And also we put the, some constraint here because we have uh, still some sensitivity here. So non-detection, so we have a uh, um, 
upper limit in this bin. So um, following the previous study, we try to fit this red histogram with a single parallel function, mass ratio function, but this doesn't agree with these upper limit on the, and also this, the last bin is almost flat. So we try to fit with the uh, broken parallel um, and it looks okay. So the, we found a peak around here and also um, we don't have uh, any detection here. So the uncertainty is large, but um, best fit model shows some decreasing towards a small mass ratio. So um, this is a best fit model and uh, this function also, uh, it's a function of uh, separation. So here, this is a uh, um, planet frequency as a function of a semi-major axis divided by the snow line. So um, micro-ranging result is plotted here. So previous Gould study is here and our study is here. And this orange plot is our RV result from coming at all. So um, maybe factor five or 10 difference between this micro-ranging and RV result, but uh, the planetary frequency as a function of semi axis is uh, has a slope, positive slope, so it looks consistent. And, but we have still larger uncertainty here, so um, maybe we need more um, detection to study the planetary frequency as a function of separation. So back to the uh, mass ratio function here. So um, this is uh, consistent with the previous study, Good et al. and Kassan et al. So we combined this um, study and we found, uh, uh, again, the broken mass ratio function. We again find a similar um, break here. So this is now uh, the, we used 30 planet to this study. And um, here is comparison between the micro ranging and the uh, RV result. So this, these RV results are um, targeting the G star host star. So we cannot, also the, these RV planets are in a hot planet. So we cannot directly compare, compare these two uh, sample. But here is the uh, RV result with the uh, M star host. So, and also these um, Bonfield et al. and Montet et al. studied the uh, wide orbit RV planet. So, Actually, the par parameter space is uh, almost the same as the micro ranging, and it um, looks consistent with the uh, RV result. Uh, maybe Christian Cranton will talk about this a little bit more. And here is a comparison to the Kepler planet. So, so micro ranging study the mass ratio function, and Kepler find the planet radius distribution. So we need to uh, convert the planet radius to the planet mass. So we used the probabilistic mass radius relation to convert the Kepler planet radius to the mass. And we found the mass function here. But the gray region is unreliable because the original paper has some um, incompleteness. So we find a similar peak here and here. So these are. Um, so mass of this break or peak is uh, six to eight Earth mass. And micro-ranging found a break here, and this is corresponding to the 20 Earth mass. So um, if we consider the two, factor two uncertainty, this break is probably 10 to 40 Earth mass. So the break mass is massive to the, the micro-ranging break is massive compared to the Kepler in a planet break. So um, we, we found this difference. And also finally, um, this is a comparison to the population synthesis. So we um, collaborating with Ida-san, and Ida-san generates some um, um, uh, the population synthesis model to, um, to optimize, uh, generate, uh, to produce a uh, um, cold gas giant and Neptune planet. But still, uh, the population synthesis model has less planet compared to the observation. So um, we are, this is still pre preliminary result, but we are working with Sidasan to uh, study what, what is the uh, uh, mechanism or what we should tune for the uh, planetary formation model. So um, 
I will stop here. So this is summary. So uh, mass ratio function from Moore survey, we found uh, the break at the mass ratio of 1.7 times 10 to minus 4. And the mass of the break seems to be more massive compared to the Kepler planet break. And also, planet population synthesis model does not reproduce the micro-ranging result. And still, these are open questions. So maybe cold planet mass function depends on the semi-major axis and host star mass and distance to the lens system. So I hope uh, K2 or Sepitza and finally WFAS will answer these questions. Thank you. Yeah, we, we, uh, in this study, we didn't check the metallicity or the environment of the host star. So, um, so and also, we didn't uh, compare the planet frequency. We just compared the mass of the break position. So it's still difficult. Maybe Christian answer. Maybe he, he, he might talk about the compare with RB result. Oh, I used I uh, used uh, just a single lens fitting, and just we take the chi square of the so we yeah.